This is Walton Wood in Walton Village, Liverpool, and we're just off High Street. What we're looking at here is the three buildings which make up St Julie's Catholic High School. It's a voluntary aided Roman Catholic secondary school, predominantly for girls, but boys were admitted into the sixth form. When we moved to Walton in 1960, I'd never heard of Walton Hall. Back then, it was known as Notre Dame. Notre Dame Catholic Girls School. And uh, I'm just at the back of the grounds of what is now St. Julie's. And as you can see, it's not stopped raining. <laughs> anyway, in this video, we're going to look at Walton Hall because I think it might be a good time to make a video about it. St. Julie's is a Notre Dame school and its aim is to put into practice the principles of the school's patron saint, St. Julie Billiard. And she is the foundress of the Sisters of Notre Dame. Now when I've read things about um, Walton Hall, I've seen quite a few people make a comment that they have no idea where the hall is. So I'm going to do my very best to show you exactly where Walton Hall is and how it's laid out. This is Walton Street and it's only a short run. In that direction is Walton Village and in this direction is Speak Road. And this gate has an inscription for Notre Dame. I'm sorry about my French accent by the way, it's not very good. So we're going to head off towards Speak Road and its junction with uh, what we're on at the moment which is Walton Street and we're going to have a look at the main entrance of uh, St Julie's School. So you would attend this school from being age 11 to being age 18 I guess unless you got an apprenticeship at 16 um, but basically 11 to 18 year olds come to this school teaching began here in September 2017 but it was officially opened by Mayor Jo Anderson in September of 2018. You can see Walton Hall just behind that pointed tree on the left hand side that's the side of the building. The relationship then is that St Julie's was once just called Notre Dame and they occupied Walton Hall from 1950. So we're now on Speak Road and I'm in a bus shelter mainly because it's throwing it down with rain but um, to the right of me is Manor Road and in this direction to my left that takes us to Hunts Cross. So Walton Hall is on the opposite side of the road from us and these rather ornate period gates show where the pathway leads up towards the hall. And just to prove that it is raining and it's not just special effects. So I've crossed the road now and um, I've put the camera through a gap in the gates. And this is the pathway which would lead up to Walton Hall. It's very wet here because uh, there's a lot of big raindrops falling off the off the trees which overhang the wall. This sign is from its days when it was a wedding venue. So basically you could pass here every day on your way to work or indeed live in the village for 65 years and you would never know or get sight of what was behind the wall here. 
So we're looking towards Wilton Village here. This is the direction Wilton Village is. And we're at the top of Manor Road. So this is the other side of Manor Road. We've just basically crossed the road. And this is the same view towards the village. And at this bus stop here, which is between Manor Road and uh, Watergate Lane, directly opposite this sign is the entrance and the front of the building of Woolton Hall. So it's where the bend in the road is and directly opposite this road sign. So looking back, I don't know if you can see in the distance there on the other side, on the left hand side, that's where I was stood in the bus stop, in the bus shelter. And this is the other side of Manor Road. We're looking towards um, Hunts Cross direction at the moment. So let's look at this map. Okay, so you can see St. Julie's is marked on the map and the three buildings which uh, were at the beginning of the video. You can also see two green rectangles which are all weather sports pictures. And just below those two green rectangles is Woolton Hall. You can also see Speak Road and its junction with Manor Road and you can also see where Watergate Lane is and two blue signs there, two blue squares which the little bus is in, they're the two bus stops. Let's move in a little closer and this is Walton Hall and you can see that some demolition has taken place. These I think were outbuildings which were used by uh, the school when it was called Notre Dame and once the pupils moved into these new buildings the main hall was used less and less and I think over the years this is where it began to fall into decline. Now you can see more clearly Speak Road and its junction with Manor Road and at the top of the map you can see it says My Key Machine. So the front entrance of the building is basically pointing towards that sign which says My Key Machine. And it's important when we have a look at some photographs that you understand the orientation. The sign of My Key Machine is uh, on the opposite side of the road to where the bus stop was. So this is a closer view of the site. You can see Walton Hall and looks like three demolished outbuildings and one still remaining. These basically became Notre Dame School and took over from the, uh, the hall and also the school as it is today, St. Julie's. I'm not sure when this photograph was actually taken, but it dates from when the hall was running as Notre Dame School, a Catholic school run by nuns. So the house was built sometime between 1700 and 1704. I think most people go with 1704. It was built for a politician named Richard Molyneux. In 1772, Woolton Hall was acquired by Nicholas Ashton, he is a former High Sheriff of Lancashire, and he commissioned noted architect Robert Adam to remodel and expand the building extensively. When Nicholas Ashton died in 1833, he left the house to his son Joseph, and in turn, Joseph left the house to his son Charles. Charles Ashton, or Charles Alice, as he is also recorded in history, sold the house in 1865 to James Redcliffe Jeffrey, and he was the owner of Liverpool's largest department store at the time, Compton House, which was on Church Street. Later that year, his shop on Church Street caught fire, and all his stock was destroyed. Most of it was uninsured. 
eventually this led to the failing of his business and Geoffrey had to put the hall up for auction in 1869. This photograph clearly shows the extension which was built on the left hand side. Geoffrey put the house up for auction in 1869 but it took him until 1877 to actually sell the hall. The hall was purchased for £19,000 by Frederick Leyland, former owner of Speak Hall. The Leylands lived in Woolton Hall until 1898. It was then sold to a captain, Peter McGuffey, and the McGuffey family were a family of ship owners. The McGuffeys demolished the West Wing and converted the remainder of the hall into a hydropathic hotel. That's um, a water cure for pain. Now I think the McGuffey family lived in the hall until 1948. This photograph clearly shows the title Walton Hall Hydro. So this must have been in the period when it was owned by the McGuffeys but it looks like it was taken before they demolished the West Wing. Also a little bit of information saying that uh, Walton Hall was an uh, army hospital during the 1950s. That's true or not, I don't know, because the McGuffey family moved out in 1948, and in 1948 the Sisters of Notre Dame took over the building. So how it's possible to have been an, an army hospital, um, I don't know where that fits in. So now we are in more modern times and the hall became a convent school, convent of Notre Dame. And in 1970, the school merged with Notre Dame High School, which is located in Mount Pleasant in Liverpool city centre. So as the school expanded, New modern buildings were built at the side of the hall and this really meant that the hall was no longer used and uh, basically it was abandoned. In 1980 the building had been earmarked for demolition but fortunately it was saved by a local resident called John Hibbert and history says that he purchased the hall for £100,000. But according to John Hibbert himself, he purchased the hall for £15,000 and spent £100,000 on its restoration. So this is what the building looked like in the 1980s when John Hibbert uh, ran it as a wedding venue and I think a, a place for meetings as well. But um, certainly it was a very successful uh, wedding venue. Hibbert was also responsible for getting this building a graded listing. This is actually now a grade one listed building. Eventually though the costs of keeping this building in a ship shape manner became a little too much and John Hibbert decided to call it a day and I think he sold the, uh, the hall in around about 2005. I know a lot of my friends who were in the wedding business in the 2000s as a photographers, car drivers or videographers did quite a few weddings at Walton Hall but no one ever booked me. <laughs> I never actually got the, uh, the chance to go and work there. Anyway, certainly by 2005 there were plans to convert the hall into a retirement home and to also build 62 new retirement flats on the grounds of the estate, probably where the white buildings built by Notre Dame are. Now I think these plans were submitted by new owners. I think by 2005 John Hebert had sold the, the hall on. Now I think these new owners uh, live in Yorkshire and John Hibbert was given keys to the property so he basically acted as a, a caretaker 
but he also allowed people to look around the grounds and look around the hall. Quite a few urban explorers were allowed into the hall to take photographs and document its decline. Also, ghost hunters came here uh, to spend a night or two um, trying to contact ghosts who they believed to live here. For whatever reason, this building has never been turned into the planned retirement home, and the owners have a reputation of having a hands-off approach. In other words, they've just basically left this building um, to decline even further. And these are photographs from pretty recent times, 2019, 2020, I think 2021 as well. And it shows you the deterioration of the whole site. But you know, even if this building was turned into a retirement home, the general public wouldn't be able to see it. And it's part of our history. It would just become private property, very much like Walton Manor has become. In May 2019, there was a huge fire at Walton Hall. Witnesses told of a loud explosion and a huge black plume of smoke. Firefighters received a call at around 10 to 6 in the evening and five fire engines were at the scene within five minutes. I believe the police did um, have suspicions that the fire was started deliberately but um, it's probably those pesky kids again. I'm going to end this video with what could be very good news because according to a Facebook group called Save Walton Hall. They are reporting that this month, September 2022, the Molyneux family, the original owners of the hall, have placed in an offer for the hall's acquisition and they plan to restore the hall back to its former glory. I think they also plan to live in the hall, but they also say that they will open the hall up for the public to visit on certain days throughout the year. So while I'm going to end on what I think is good news, uh, it's a case of wait and see. Anyway, thank you for watching the video and uh, we'll catch up soon.